Hi, I'm Rayburn Johnson for Sample Library Review, and today I'm hanging out with Mosaic Tape by Heaviosity. As the fourth entry into the Mosaic series, Mosaic Tape takes us deep into the world of analog tape. With sounds that are warbling and aged, Mosaic Tape is the perfect complement to composers wanting to make an entry into the current analog tape loop sound without a huge investment in pedals and outboard equipment. Mosaic Tape is 3.2 gigabytes and includes 106 snapshot presets featuring 113 different sound sources, from orchestral to choirs to keys and even tuned percussion. Mosaic Keys is housed in Heaviosity's Mosaic Engine and runs in either the Free Contact Player or Contact 6.4.2 or above. Mosaic Keys is available from Heaviosity for $119, but is currently available for $99 at time of review. Owners of other Mosaic libraries can also receive an additional 20% off. So today I'm checking out Mosaic Tape, which is the latest entry into Heaviosity's Mosaic series. So far, I really love this series. Um, there's been Mosaic Bass, Mosaic Keys. I think there's even been another one. But anyway, it's just been a really great series. Um, as always, Heaviosity's engines are second to none. <laughs> they just have such creative interfaces that do so much. So we're going to dive into that a little, a little later. But I'll tell you what, right now, let's go ahead and start with some of the snapshots. And we're going to go through as many of those as we can tell you a little bit about the engine and let you see what you think of mosaic tape. Um, again, this one, just to, just to kind of set this up, this is really about analog tape. Um, as many of you know, the sound of analog tape right now is a very uh, popular thing, especially with more ambient music, instrumental, um, a lot of the Scandi type sound, um, which I'm personally very, very fond of. So this has a lot of that analog feel to it using analog tape. So let's check it out. All right. The first set of categories, we'll see we have some ARPs, we have a bunch of playables and some rhythmic sounds as well. And of course, the great thing about this is you can always build your own sounds as well. These are really to get you started, but let's go ahead and start with the ARPs. I'm spending a little more on that sound than I normally do, a little more time. <laughs> Hopefully you could hear the nuance under that. That was a really, really cool sound. Love that one. All right, let's try Descending Synthetic Triplets. really liking these. Ooh, dreaming in eighths. OMG. No one steal that. I'm going to go use that. <laughs> oh, I love that. Dang, that's an awesome sound. Dreaming in 16. I mean, if Dreaming in 8th was good, how about 16th?
Oh, did you hear that? <laughs> that little echo? Oh, yeah, I love that. Golly, I love that. Okay, let's try Essence of Flight. I, I, it's hard. Honestly, it's hard to stop playing these. These are really good. I love that analog tape sound, that really warbled sound. I love that. And this goodness so far, this has that in spades. Really, really loving that. Honestly, I've not seen many instruments that do that. Most things, you know, most of the time you got to go get pedals and, you know, all of that kind of stuff to do this. So having this in the box is pretty darn cool. All right. Next gated tape voices. Hopeful Chimer. Really, really great stuff. How about Jagged Little Machine? This sounds like something's going to be coming at us that's nice. Oh, yeah. Loving that. Gosh, I'm really liking these ARPs a lot. Never ending talker. This might be my uh, my snapshot here. <laughs> goes on and on. <laughs> oh, that's awesome.
Oh no, that just makes me want to lay down and uh, <laughs> just lay on a hammock somewhere and listen to that on a loop. Which I can imagine so many of these sounds, you know, would serve as just great music beds to lay like a, um, you know, a soft piano, a felt piano on top of. You could just do some really magical stuff with that. Loving that. You know, the only thing I don't like about contact sometimes is that you can't favorite things. You can't just save that because, oh, gosh, there's a lot of these I would just like to go back to. That's why you keep a spreadsheet, folks. <laughs> so you can write these down as you go along. Love that warble. You know, and that really reminds me, let's go ahead and go through the interface some. Um, this is going to be very familiar to previous Mosaic owners. There are some wrinkles here that are a little bit different, but pretty much uh, very similar to what you're used to. So you have three sound sources, and of course you can change those sound sources. Um, you know, pick any three that you want for each of the channels. Um, each one has, of course, the pan and the tune control, the volume control, all that kind of thing. But the real magic in the Mosaic Engine is really the, the macro sequencer that controls all of these different parameters. So, you know, you can, you can click each of these parameters, the envelope, EQ, filter, um, drive or saturation, gate, and the reverb or space. And, of course, you can, <clears throat> excuse me, you can design those exactly the way you want, but the, the magic really is in having those sequence. So for instance, here we are on the filter and you can see that for channel one, it's just kind of going back and forth as the macro moves. So I can control how much of the back and forth motion this goes through by, you know, holding up and dragging or dragging down. And of course you'll see it has a much smaller um, range here if I do that. And of course, you know, I can of course control the volume or the frequency by doing this. And that's true all the way through. So you've got your envelope EQ, uh, which I love. That's one thing I love about this engine too, is they actually have a graphic, a, a, you know, a graphic EQ, which is very unusual for a contact interface. So really like that. Um, you've got again, your filter, the drive saturation control, which you can do tube or two different types of tape. You can do a stomp box, an amplifier, lo-fi distortion. So you got distortion and saturation here. You've got your gate, which you can set up. You know, you can change the number of steps all the way up to 64 or down to one. So really great stuff there. And of course your space with your delay and your reverb per channel. Um, and then with your options, again, this is where you can select your sounds. But the great thing too, is you can actually slide each of the different sound sources to only con be controlled by certain key ranges. So if you don't want it going over, you can change it and you'll see the, the keys, the key colors will change to match. Um, so really, really nice. Really like that a lot. Um, you've got your, of course, arpeggiator with a separate arpeggiator per channel. One thing I like about this too, is they have this really cool chord feature. So for instance, let's say I want to put I want a chord coming in when I hold down my ARP. Well, I'm picking a really, I guess a bad sound. Well, let's go to another one really quickly. Let's see if this one's a better one to do this with, but I'm going to go ahead and turn on the arpeggiator for all of these. We'll just kind of drag this around here. 
And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, on the seventh note, let's play a chord or maybe even the seventh and maybe the 14th. What the heck? Let's do two of them. And you'll notice that as I hold it down, it does an arpeggio until it gets to those two points and it plays a chord. Again, not the best example here. These are probably not the best sounds to do it on. It's better on the playables, but you get the picture. Um, and of course the macro sequencer, again, you can control, you know, you, you can control the shape of this by either a pre, um, you know, a pre-made snapshot or you can drag it yourself. And of course that's what controls the sequencer here. So you can see as it's moving along, it's changing what it's doing based on the graph here. And then last, but definitely not least, is the master effects section, which has the ultra famous punish button that Heavy Osti has, and you know some of the standard things that we've come to expect. But this is where the magic is in Mosaic Tape, is this aging section. So you actually have the warble in here, um, which you know those of you who are familiar with the old tape machines will remember, you know, are probably used to that. So you'll notice. Actually, let's go to you know we've. We've looked at the ARPs. Let's go to the playables. This will really give us a chance to, to watch this shine a little more. So I'm going to play the airy marimba and just kind of move that aging section along to let you see exactly what you get there. I mean, you can just hear that detune effect is just so, so cool. And of course you can make it more mono to make it sound really old school. Really, really great stuff. All right, so enough about the sequencer, the interface. It's just really, really great. Heaviosity al always has some great videos that accompany each of their instruments. So definitely encourage you to look through that. It's ultra easy to use. I mean, you can just do so much in here. Again, setting up your own sounds. Um, the snapshots just get you started. I think there's, if I'm not mistaken, I want to say there's 113 different um, sound sources in here. So just a lot to play around with. All right, so let's go. Let's go through some of these. This is where the bulk of the, of the snapshots are. So let's go through some of these in the playables. Definitely sounds like an old tape or old taped orchestra. How about big but lo-fi piano? that warble as I hold down the damper pedal. All right, um, big sound broken top. I'm really loving the echo a lot of these have. Let's see, Burnt Turner. I know I keep saying it, but I just love that fade out. So nice. How about Celestial Transmission?
It definitely lives up to the name. You've definitely got that analog feel. How about Center Speaker Orchestra? And as you can see, again, each of the keys have some different sounds. So let's just go through some of those so you can kind of hear the difference. So that's representative of the green. Blue, let's go to the purple. Pink. And the orange. So each of those have a definitely a different sound to them. Dang, I love that sound. Oh my goodness. Big old heart, Desolate Harpy vibes. Love that. I will be using that, friends. Double Sweller. Okay, let's jump down some more. Let's see, how about Electro Piano? I really like that. One of the things I love is in the Mosaic series, one of the things I've really enjoyed throughout all the libraries is many times as I'm playing a sound, I'll hear an element of that sound that really just captures my attention. And I go, gosh, I can really use that in a track. And so, you know, you can solo out and find what that is and only use that, you know? So like, for instance, let's take out, let's take out everything and listen to each of these sound sources independently for the sound. Now, how cool is that? Just bass amp noise. So then you put it all together and you just get something really cool. Pretty 
really, really fun. I definitely encourage you to check out the different sound sources. There's just so many things in here. Listen to that growl down here. See, I can imagine just that, that right there is the inspiration for a whole track. Just that one note. I can hear a thousand directions that could go in. Golly, that's, that's really great. A great underscore pad that would make. in the water it could it did sound like pebbles in the water didn't it jump into the rhythmics, which you've probably heard me say before, are always my favorite in a heaviosity instrument. They just do the best rhythmic work. Thank you. 
Oh, that's a great one. Hear where that metallic sounds coming from. Oh yeah, that's it. Listen to that. That's really cool. You know, one of the things that this also encourages me personally to do is just to kind of go outside the box. You know, you stay so much in, you know, some of the same chord patterns, but not just the same chord patterns, the actual notes, you know, like the triads. This, to me, this really helps you venture outside and throw in some, you know, some sixth notes or, you know, some uh, fourth notes. I mean, just strange, you know, different, different colors. I don't know. It just... It's encouraging me to do that, which is really cool. get through a couple more we've made it through a whole lot of snapshots which is great let's go to
It's got a really subtle rhythm going on underneath it. All right, let's go through two more. Ticking away. And last but not least, let's do wobbly pulses. And that, my friends, is Mosaic Tape. Um, I really like this library. It's very different. As you've heard, it's a little more um, in the left field. You know, it's it's not quite in the mainstream. It's not quite sounds that you might use every single day. But if you're really looking for that analog tape sound, um, gosh, this is the best library I've heard so far for that sound. I mean, it just really gives you that especially when you go over here, that warble control, that aging section, just really, really great stuff. Thanks for checking out Mosaic Tape with me today. Are you currently into the analog tape revolution? Is Mosaic Tape something that catches your ear? Let us know your thoughts below in the comments. We would love it if you would like this video, maybe share it with your friends, and also subscribe to our channel and check out samplelibrarywreview.com to get more video reviews like this, and also to check out our weekly deal compressor.